PM Magazine was Cleveland, Ohio's uh, entertainment tonight-ish kind of show that would run each evening, I think at 7.30. And uh, the recently deceased Michael Stanley was a longtime host along with Jan Jones. And on this segment from October 28th, 1986, you get an interesting look at the newly released album by Paul Simon, Graceland which had yet to become what we know Graceland to be, one of the largest selling, most influential albums of all time. And uh, the social change aspect and apartheid, which was still lingering, uh, is addressed in here. And uh, it's cool to see the beginning of Graceland. Uncle made their mark with songs that expressed the political concerns of those turbulent times. But in the 70s, they broke up, and Paul went on to forge a very successful career. That's true, but in the 80s, Paul took some lumps. He made an album, and it flopped. He made a movie, and that flopped as well. And then he married Carrie Fisher, and six months later, the marriage flopped too. Now, Paul Simon has returned to his political roots with an album that takes on South African apartheid. The album is called Graceland, and it's moving up the charts. Now, recently, PM Magazine's Pam Thompson spoke with Ryman Simon about his love life and his return to music with a message. I was sitting in my car one night, sitting on a corner, like under a street lamp in Queens. We had nothing to do. And we were listening to the radio, and they were, like, they were doing the countdown to the top ten, and they finally got to number one, and it was the sound of silence. And, uh, and Artie turned to me, and he said, those guys must be having so much fun. <laughs> that was over 20 years ago, and although they've tried to reunite several times, both have definitely gone their separate ways. Both Art and Paul have tried their hands in the movies, but Paul says acting just doesn't compare to songwriting. He has recorded eight solo albums, and in his newest, Paul turns to music with a political message. The entire album is devoted to abolishing South African apartheid. <laughs> felt in their own terms that they were uh, victimized by a double apartheid. They were living, obviously, under apartheid at home. And when they tried to export their music, they were getting resistance everywhere because they were South African. And they were very doubt like what our characters were going to be in the video, you know, and I was going to be a you know, solemn person and he was going to just be silly. Although Paul has stayed on top of his musical career, his personal life has been less than successful. His first marriage to Peggy Harper ended soon after the birth of their son in the early 70s. Almost 10 years later, his second well-publicized marriage to Carrie Fisher also ended in divorce. You have had two marriages now. Do you feel that marriage is out of the question in the future? No. I think if you fall in love, you're probably going to get married. So, as many times as that ever happens to you in life, lucky people happens once. Mm -hmm. But other lucky people, and it keeps happening. Why did you and Art Garfunkel stop performing together? Well, that's very complex, because uh, this, is, this is my oldest friend, somebody I've known since the age of uh, 10 or 11. And we experienced uh, anonymity and then great fame and success and and those things have their own pressure there there is that there was uh, uh, arts uh, interest in movies but it was five intense years of of being a hit and that's that's close to the lifespan that's about how long the Beatles stay together too in the song Graceland, the vocals are, my traveling companion is nine years old. He is the child of my first marriage. How do you like being a father? Mostly joyful. I think he likes what I do. I've never asked him that question, of course. But I think he likes it. Yeah, in fact, he has said that, that, he th that Simon and Garfunkel was one of the big groups out of the out of the 60s. Yeah, that felt good when he said that. I mean, my career could go up or down, but my work is a steady process. It's, it, it, it will just continue until, until it reaches its natural end, or I reach a natural end. Paul recently celebrated his 45th birthday and says he plans to keep writing songs for at least the next couple of decades. 
Now, this is a man who hates to tour, but with the Graceland album doing so well, he may be out in the road as early as next year. But don't expect to hear all the old hits, because the idea behind this tour will be to give publicity to South African music.